Hello everyone, today we continue learning Python and today I'll explain you how you can use JSON and what's it for. So let's start. First of all, if you want to use JSON in Python, you can use a uh, standard library of JSON. So import JSON, you don't need to install it, it's in your Python. Okay, JSON. So what is JSON? JSON is JavaScript object notation. And why do we use it? Imagine that you have a server and a client, or you have a website and a client again. And if you need to translate your data, you can use pure strings. So watch my other videos about Twisted and I'll explain how data is transferred between clients and servers. Because we use uh, bytes and bytes are just strings but um, but bytes. Okay, we use bytes. We, can use, we cannot use lists or dictionaries in Python when it comes to data transfer. Okay, so we use bytes and in Python we have bytes by the way. You can read about them. And if you can transfer simple data, and simple data is, for example, hello, just a simple text. And that's fine when you need to send simple data using your clients and your servers. But what happens when you have complex apps like Telegram, for example? And by the way, subscribe to my Telegram channel because there are lots of information, quizzes, news about Python. I think you, find, you will find it helpful. Okay, so when you have complex data and there are lots of... Mm, things you need to follow. For example, what you need to follow is uh, when you send a text and an image in the Telegram, you have text as hello, for example, and then you have image as one.png, for example. That's it. These are two variables. That's not one variable. And these variables are pure strings. But you send a message to a specific user and you need to put that user ID. So, for example, to user. Sorry, to user as one, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. So as you can see now, we have we cannot just simply put that into a string in Python, and because of that, we need to use um, some methods to transfer our data from the client to the server. And in Python, and actually in every programming language, we have two main ways to transfer that data. You can make your own way, but lots of people use XML, but XML is generally used in Java. I don't know, C-sharp and so on. But in Python, I saw lots of examples that use JSON and I prefer JSON myself. JSON is a tool that helps you to transfer your data from your client to your server and vice versa. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation and how we can use it. First of all, we need to make an object out of these three lines and we have key and we have value. I think if you know Python, you understand that we can use dictionaries right here. So data equals Again, if you don't understand, in modern apps, we have lots of values or lots of rules that we need to follow. For example, we have text, then we have an image, then we have a user we send our message to. And these are three lines. We cannot put them into a string together. And because of that, we'll use JSON that helps us to transfer our data from our clients to our servers. Okay, so first of all, what we need to do is encode our data to JSON because we want to send it to our server, for example. And then we need to decode that data in our server application because we need to work with the data as we work in, with it in Python because we will not use JSON in Python. JSON is just a string. So again, that's a rule. JSON equals equals to str. It's just a string that helps you to transfer your data. Okay, so what we will do? We'll use JSON to encode our data and it will be a string. Then we'll transfer our data to our client or to our server or we'll save that data somewhere. And then once we got that data on the other computer or where we need to use it, we can decode the data and we'll receive object in Python. So we will transfer, we will translate dictionary to a string and then string to a dictionary using JSON module. Okay, I think you understand that and let's finally start. What we need to do is use one function, JSON or sorry, json.dumps. json.dumps uh, transfers your, json.dumps translates your object to json string. And let's save it to json str, for example, json str equals json dumps, or sorry, json str, and let's print that json str. Okay, what we need to provide in our json dumps? First, we need to provide an object, for example, data. And if I run my code now, as you can see, nothing is changed, but actually, we have JSON string right here. So if I go with uh, type from JSON string, it will 
say that a JSON string is a string because JSON dumps return returns a string. And as you can see, uh, text as hello, image as one PNG to user as one two three four six, five six. These objects, two objects, so Python dictionary and JSON, are pretty similar. And there are lots of people that say that, say that because um, nobody knows what was the first Python dictionary or JSON because they are pretty similar. And if you know Python and Python dictionaries, it will be or much more easier for you to work with JSON objects. Okay, so JSON dumps translates our data to JSON string. And as you can see, we have our data right here. We can use uh, almost every data in our JSON application. So for example, um, we can use list one, two, three, four. Two user one, two, three, four. We want to send our message to four users. And as you can see, text hello image one dot png to user one, two, three, four. But there is a problem with data types in Python. Because as you, as you know, JSON stands for JavaScript object notation, not Python object notation. And because that way you can have some errors when it comes to specific data types in Python. For example, we have set in Python. Set. Set it's a list of unique elements. So for example, if I add to one num uh, one and one, uh, there will be one one will be removed. I think you understand me, okay? So <laughs> it's just a list of unique elements in Python. And one two three four everything works perfectly in Python, but when it comes to JSON, we receive an error. Object of type set is not JSON serializable. And how we can overcome that problem? What we can do is use our own JSON encoder. So again, I said that we need to encode our data at first. And to encode data, we'll use encoder. And in JSON, we have um, our default encoder, which is called json.json encoder. So that's a class, we can go right here, JSON encoder, as you can see, extensible, extensible JSON. From json.org, encoder for Python data structures. That's it. And as you can see, we have uh, that little table right here. So Python dictionary goes to JSON object. Python list and tuple goes to JSON array. Because again, JavaScript, and if you know JavaScript, you know that there are no, there are no lists and tuples. There are only arrays in JavaScript. Python string, go to, Python string goes to string. Uh, Python integer for to number, true to true, false to false, and none to now. None, it's like nothing in Python, and in JavaScript we have now. That's it. So, as you can see, to recognize objects, implement default method. And let's do that. I will create our new class. So again, JSON encoder, it's a default encoder for Python JSON. Class, uh, my encoder. And let's inherit from JSON dot JSON encoder. Like that. Define default. Okay, so we override the default method and what we need to do here? We need to return our object and we have two arguments, first of all self and then object. So O it's an object and uh, in our case our object in JSON dumps it's our data, so that object. And we have set which is not JSON serializable. What we need to do? Actually, we need to use something like that. If is instance, uh, is instance checks if your object is set string uh, so if object is set i think you understand how it works then we'll return um, a list from our object okay let's remove that and i'll explain what uh, i mean right here if i will call a pure list one two three for example let's run as you can see json uh, dumps from list gives us javascript array that's how it works and everything works fine with that but if i translate or change the list to be um, to be a set, we receive an error again. And in our my encoder, if is instance O is if our object is a set, then we return list from our set. We just simply get uh, every element from our set and translate it to list. That's it. That's how it works. But else, if our object is integer, string, um, and everything else, if our object is not a set, then we just simply return our object. That's how it works. Now, uh, to assign my own encoder to my JSON dumps function, what I need to do is use CLS, my encoder. Let's run it again. And as you can see, when I put a set in our JSON dumps, I receive JavaScript uh, array. That's how it works. So again, if you have types that are not JSON serializable, for example, your own types, sets, uh, complex types, decimals in Python, everything which is not JSON serializable, which gives you an error, then you can create your own JSON encoder and 
have a specific behavior for your own type. For example, um, dev default, it's a function need to override. Again, self, it's a normal argument, and o, it's your object. If our object is set, then we return a list. If our object is, um, I don't know, a player, then we return HP of that player. Everything you want right here. So you need to return an object and you can have a specific behavior uh, for specific objects in your default method. That's it. And to assign your own encoder, you need to do, what you need to do is assign CLS as my encoder. So that function JSON dumps helps you to translate your objects, Python objects to JSON strings. Okay, there are lots of arguments in here. For example, uh, ensure a key. Let's go Privet. Привет in Russian, which means hello. And as you can see, we don't use English symbols right here. So we don't use Latin symbols right here. So hello uh, is written in Latin, in pure UTF-8 or pure SK encoding. But if I call Привет, then I cannot just simply run it. If I run it now, as you can see, we have that. But if I want to say to see Привет in my JSON function, so if I want to uh, see the text as it was in Python, like that, привет. What I need to do is use ensure as key. So ensure as key is by default is true, but if I will call it to false, then as you can see, we receive the string as it was in Python. So привет. But if I put ensure as key to true, then we receive bytes from our string. So these are bytes. And actually it's better to put bytes because um, there are also systems that, systems that do not support uh, UTF-8 yet, for example, uh, Windows uses CP1251 or something like that encoding instead of UTF-8. But Python, so as you can see, I use UTF-8 right here. And because of that, when I put ensure as key as false, I can see my pure privet right here. But if I use encoding, which is not compatible with these symbols, I receive a mess or I can even receive an error. Because of that, ensure as key, you should set it to true and by default it's true, and you receive pure bytes from your string. Okay, the other argument I want to talk about is skip keys. So skip keys argument helps you to skip keys of objects that cannot be encoded. I remove my encoder because uh, there is no need for it, and I'll create my own class A. Then define hash function that, okay, I'll just return hash from one, then let's make a dictionary, so mm, dictionary like that, a and let's go to 10 for example and then hello how are you something like that what what i did here i created my own object in python and if you want to put your object as a key in your dictionary and as you can see i have a dictionary here and dictionary is key hello and with key a i need to override hash method uh, in my object and as you can see i'm doing it right here so define hash and i'll return hash from Let's return hash from a string, okay? Let's return hash from a string and I will assign my object to 10. Now, if skip keys is false, what will happen? We receive an error. As you can see, keys must be string, integer, forward, boolean, or none. But if I will put skip keys as true, what will happen? We will just receive keys that can be encoded. So as you can see, we have hello key um, and hello is a string. And that can be encoded by JSON. And because of that, we just simply receive that hello key. But if your type is not string, integer, float, um, list, or okay, you cannot put lists as uh, keys. So if your type is not compatible with JSON and A type, it's our own class. It's not compatible. We don't have that class in JavaScript object notation. Because of that, we receive an error if skip keys is false. But if you want to skip all the keys that cannot be encoded then you can so you can see string integer fold boolean or none but if you want to skip all the keys that cannot be encoded then you can use true for skip keys and as you can see hello how are you but i don't recommend doing that because you miss some data it's better to again create your own encoders so and another argument that you can find useful is sort keys so sort keys helps you to sort your keys in your um, json for example if you want to sort your keys in your JSON string, then you should assign sort keys as true. And they will be sorted um, according to JSON or not JSON UTF-8 and coding table. That's it. And that's how Python sorts all strings. That's how JSON sorts them and sorts them. Then we have in that argument in our JSON. 
So as you can see, now we have pure object right here. But if I will set in the S4, for example, what will happen, as you can see, we have our bracket, then we have four spaces right here, and then we have our keys and our values. If I will set indent S minus 10, uh, of course, we we'll receive, um, we we'll receive nothing, we will just have no spaces before our keys and before our values. If you want your code to be beautiful, not code, but JSON. So actually, that's all I want to tell you about JSON dumps. There are lots of arguments in it, but you will not use most of them. So what you need to what you need to memorize is the first argument, which is object and CLS argument, which helps you to have your own encoders in JSON. And of course, ensure as key, but ensure as key is always um, it's always false. If you are if you don't speak English or Latin language, then you should use ensure as key. So now we have successfully translated our object, our Python dictionary, to JSON. But how we can decode? So we encode it, but how we can decode our JSON string to Python object? Let's do that with JSON loads. So I have my JSON string right here. And if I want to use it, for example, if I want to get a key, what I need to do is JSON string from a. But we receive an error because that's a string and that's a dictionary. What I really need to do is use json.loads loads function to get my string and translate that string to, um, to Python object. That's it. So from JSON to Python, JSON string. And as you can see, we have uh, two similar objects, but the, the second one is a Python object. And let's save it. So for example, Python python dictionary equals json words and then let's print python dictionary from a for example and as you can see we have a s10 right here in our json string then i use json words to translate from string to python object and then i receive a dictionary for, for my text and then i can uh, simply get the value for the key a that's how it works, folks. There are lots of arguments right here, but okay, so encoding should be UTF-8 because everybody uses it today. Then we have CLS, it's your own encoder, but in that case, you need to uh, inherit from JSON decoder. But it works the similar way as it works with uh, JSON encoder. So JSON encoder, JSON decoder. Okay, CLS, and then we have parse float, parse integer. Um, these are just for JSON language. So for example, if you want to translate specific types to specific types in Python, you should use them as true or as false. These arguments are not widely used in most of the projects and because of that, I will not talk about them. So as you can see, first of all, we have the string and then, then we have encoding. It's better for you to actually put encoding in every words function, but you can omit that because uh, by default, it's UTF-8 as far as I know. Uh, let's go right here object hook uh, okay let's go with encoding yes yeah, okay as you can see here the encoding argument is ignore and deprecated that means that you don't really need to use that but if you want you can use utf8 as key uh, i don't know windows encoding and so on but it's deprecated and you don't need to use it actually what you need to do is json words from json string and it will give you a python object so again json dumps translates your object python object to json string and JSON words translates your string to Python object. Okay, there are two more functions I need to talk about today. First of all, it's JSON dump. So what JSON dump, sorry, not dumps, but JSON dump. What JSON dump does, it's just simply, it will not return you JSON string. It will put it into a file. So for example, open from this, uh, let's call it uh, test.json. And JSON files are have an extensions as .json. Okay, dot JSON with write and encoding as UTF-8, UTF-8, like that. So I opened a file in my JSON dump function. Let's go right here. And what I need to do is put an object and then I need to put a stream. So in Python, when we open objects, we use streams and that open creates a new stream. So you, all you need to do is put a file if you don't understand me. Okay, so test JSON and we need to put an object, for example, let's put a dictionary or let's put a list because it's more it's quicker one to three as you can see process finished with that exit code zero and we have test json right here if i open it i'll have my json but not in a string but in json file okay so as you understand now json dump gets your json object and then does not return it as a string json dumps 
returns it as a string, but JSON dump writes it to a to a file. In our case, it's test JSON file, and as you can see, test JSON right here. Everything works fine. But these are function. These two functions are pretty similar, and another function is JSON load. JSON load does the same. What you need to do is use uh, a stream. So open test .json, uh, read from test .json, and then let's print load. And as you can see, we receive our own um, our object. Okay, let's sum up. JSON is used when you need to send, receive, or save your data in a structure. And JSON it's um, a really widely used um, widely used thing: JavaScript object notation. That's it. So we have four main functions in our JSON module in Python. First of all, it's json.dumps that returns you a string from your Python object, JSON string from your Python object. Then it's json.dump that mm, will not return you a string, but it will write your object to a file. So for example, if you want to save save to file, you need to use JSON dump. Then goes JSON was that will get your uh, JSON string and will translate it to Python object. And then goes JSON load, and JSON load will give will get your file. In our case, it's JSON file, and it will translate your JSON file to Python object. That's it. So again, JSON dumps for encode, encode and return. Uh, JSON dump save to file. JSON loads to um, from JSON to Python. And JSON load from file, from or let's go from JSON file to Python. That's how it works. These are four main functions in JSON. Today I explained how to use JSON module in Python, what is JSON, how to encode, how to decode data in JSON, and how to use your own JSON encoder in Python, of course. And if you like that video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, leave a like, subscribe to my GitHub and Telegram uh, pages, and yeah, good luck. Thank mm -hmm. you.